Well, nowadays, you know what they're doing? They're doing both things. They're raising the prices to riders and cutting the rate to drivers. So that's one of the challenges right now. And you gotta figure out how you can maneuver, how you're gonna get around this in order to still keep this as a viable business. Well, some of the challenges I face, actually most of the challenges I face have been in the beginning when I was a new driver before I knew all these tips and tricks, you know, such as those that Ahmed teaches, you know. But my challenges were uh, learning how to deal with these low offers, learning how to deal with these, uh, 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 what do you call it? <laughs> threats that don't mean anything from Uber and Lyft. Uh, they, they're Uber and Lyft, they tend to be very uh, passive aggressive in their messaging to you. They're like, oh, you've had too many cancellations. Watch what that does to your rating, you know? <laughs> or you're not accepting enough, you know, we need to get, keep the, the community active out there for our community members. Listen, when they're talking about community, they're not talking about you or me as drivers. They're talking about the drivers and how much money they're gonna make for themselves, not for you. So that's something that I had to learn that when they're talking about safety for the community or uh, reliability for the community, uh, they're not talking about you. They're talking about their passengers and talking about what's in it for them, not what's in it for you. How do I stay positive and motivated in difficult situations with this gig work that has its ups and downs? Well, you know, I, I look at it as to what part of it is it that I like? You know, I like the interaction with other human beings, having fun, being myself. Uh, you know, that motivates me, that makes me happy where I can, I love human beings in general, I like other people, you know, so I love having fun with them, I like joking with them, and uh, I'm a very communicative person, I, I, I'm i very a verbal person, I'm very outgoing, and so that's a way for me to exercise my uh, outgoing uh, persona, right? And, all this is part of that, you know, this crazy t-shirts that I wear, the chains, the glasses, and the hat. It kind of keeps things on a good vibe with the passengers. They don't feel threatened. They don't feel that I'm taking myself too seriously, you know, because I'm not. I try to make them feel comfortable, happy, and have fun, and know that they get in their car with me, they're going to have good vibes. Share some tips on how drivers can get more tips. Well, one way that you can get more tips is just be yourself, you know, treat the person that's in your car like they're your best friend, you know, like they're your mate, they're your sister, your brother. So whenever somebody comes in, I might say, yo, bro, what's up? Anything good? What's good today? You know, stuff like that kind of lighten the mood a little bit. If I see a young lady coming in, it's like, wow, you look amazing. Your hair looks fantastic, you know. Of course, ladies always like to hear good remarks about their appearance and stuff like that. So where are you going to here? Gonna go have some fun, gonna go meet some friends, what's going on today? You know, that kind of lightens the mood there and that starts the conversation and you can tell if somebody wants to communicate with you or if they're a person who's introverted and doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> One good clue is as soon as they sit into the car to put their earbuds on, forget it. That's the end of the conversation. Don't push it. It's not going anywhere. The other thing is if you're driving a group of people, let's say four people or even two people, if they, you notice after the initial greasing that they're into each other more, talking to each other, don't intervene. Don't put yourself into their conversation. It's very uncomfortable and creepy. Don't do that. Are your thoughts on the current state of the rideshare industry? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> My thoughts on the current state of the rideshare industry. Oh boy, I think we're looking towards a time, a period in, in rideshare history where we're going to see some dramatic changes, uh, mostly because rideshare drivers are still now getting to the point where they've had enough. You know, they're like, I had enough of abuse from these companies. And, and it's not abuse directed at them, but it's abuse because once these companies became publicly traded company and had to show a profit to their investors, what did they do? How did they make more profit? Well, they can either charge their customers more money and make more profit, or they can not give the drivers as much of a pay and take some of what normally would go to them and put that in their own pocket. Well, nowadays, you know what they're doing? They're doing both things. They're raising the prices to riders and cutting the rate to drivers. So that's one of the challenges right now. And you gotta figure out how you can maneuver, how you're gonna get around this in order to 
still keep this as a viable business. So there are things happening, not only in uh, with the local lawmakers, either your municipalities or your state uh, uh, lawmakers, but also there's newfound competition coming to those areas. And that's something I'm very excited about now. How do I do my own competition? Of course, I just told you, I recruit private rides for cash. You know, so I use the apps to get introduced to these clients. As soon as I hit it off with them with good vibes and I convince them to call me next time for their scheduled ride, I know I just gotten a client away from Uber or Lyft. So that's one way I'm disrupting their business. But the other way is there's other companies coming into the marketplace. I don't know if I should name them all, but there's Rides, there's Hum, there's a bunch of other companies coming in, and they're a subscription-based company. And what that is, is they charge the drivers a flat amount, boom, the rest of it, 100% of it, goes to the driver of that rate. 100% of it, minus some uh, costs such as credit card processing fees and all that, right? And a little bit to keep their operations up and going. But that's it. It's not like right now with Uber and Lyft, they take it up to 60%, 70%. Oh, geez, it's crazy. And then they hide it and pack it into the external fees. External fees such as insurance, such as municipal costs. How is it that for the same ride that I've taken twice for the same passenger sometimes on Uber, same distance, same pickup, same location, I get charged differently for the external fees? Now, I'm saying get charged. I get charged. I am getting charged because that's the amount they deduct from what they're paying me what amount they're adjusting on their external fees. It's a different, it's different every time. You know, sometimes they'll, they'll charge me 50% of the rate. You know, sometimes it's only 10% of the rate. Either way, it's coming out of my rate, right? Because if they're taking it out of the rate, keeping the rest for themselves, then giving me the leftovers, they're taking it out of my pocket. That's the way I look at it. Do you know that I've been tracking this? If I drop off a wealthy person to Rancho Bernardo in, the comfort ride Uber service fee will be $60. My pay is $69. I take an Uber XL ride to the same spot. Uber service fee will be $50. And my income will be slightly different. Meaning, it doesn't matter if you're Uber XL or Comfort or X. When they want to nail somebody and they got money, yeah. I'm telling you, Uber gets them. And I, and I think they do that using their al algorithm. Because yeah. they know what area of town yeah. this person lives. So yeah. they know they have money. And they're on vacation, they're here, have a good time. Yeah, they're at the Hilton in La Jolla. Yeah. You know, they're gonna know this person's got money. Or Isn't it like racial profiling or something? I don't know if it's racial profiling. Uh, I imagine there could be, yeah. especially if you're in a bad area of town. Yeah. You know, they know how much they can get from somebody and they know they're not gonna charge that much. So. Like they don't charge students $50 service fee, but yeah. they'll charge a wealthy man or woman that's out here on a business or from a foreign country. That's yeah. scandalous, bro. Yeah. Can you tell me the most valuable lesson you've learned as a rideshare driver? The most valuable lesson that I've learned as a rideshare is actually two parts. One, don't trust the rideshare apps. Uh, they're not in it for you. They're not in the business to help you out. They're in it for themselves. So keep that in mind. They're in it for themselves, not for you. Number two is know your worth. You know, are you worth? three dollars a ride that only comes by every 15 minutes or are you worth sixty dollars a ride that might come by once an hour how much do you want to make what are you worth that's how you determine that's a very valuable lesson you have to learn you know know your worth how do you balance the risk and reward of rideshare driving the way you balance the risk and reward of rideshare driving is be aware you know, use your intuition. If you pulling up to somebody and you're gonna pick them up and they're leaning against a telephone pole, then they fall over because they're that drunk. Guess what? That's not a passenger you want, you know? So pass them, cancel, go on to the next one. That's the way I look at it. If you pick up some ladies from a nightclub and they've been drinking and they start being really flirty and you might think it's a reward because they're flirting with you and you want to flirt back with them and it's very tempting because it's a compliment right you're getting you're getting from these ladies but you know that's a trap so be very polite and just be friendly be yourself but put that aside you know that's not a reward and uh, especially when they invite you up to their place I've had that happen several times to say be very polite and I know the way I answered it is like well no sorry I have to turn that down because I'm married if my wife finds out I went upstairs with a very beautiful sexy lady she's gonna be upset at me so that's a way that you can let them down softly with a compliment 
rideshare drivers unplugged playlist linked above for you are you a rideshare driver would you like to be interviewed by me uh, do you have tips tricks and hacks that will benefit the rideshare community my email address is right here give me an email let's help the other drivers that's it and check out this next video that i have linked for you i also have the playlist linked for you enjoy Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing.